And these were on my top seven games of 2017. Oh yeah. Top seven of 17. Decided to put a theme song with this year's top most anticipated games of 2017. Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm Forrest Browers Game Corner. Blah, blah, blah. You know that. I am here today to talk about my top seven most anticipated games coming out in 2017. The last year was crazy. There were more games released probably than any year ever. And I expect 2017 to be the same way. I probably looked through over 500 different games coming out in 2017. I'd say three to 500, somewhere in that margin. And I've narrowed it down to my own personal top seven. Now, these are going to be all willy-nilly. They're not in a particular order. But I will comment on where they probably would be in my top seven. Unfortunately, my phone will not allow me to put them in a particular order. But you don't care about that. So here's a few caveats before we get started. I'm not going to be talking about any reprints because there are a couple cool reprints I'm very excited about. But I'm not going to be talking about those. Also, if I've already gotten the opportunity to play slash try slash do a Kickstarter video for a game coming out in 2017 that I know is spectacular, like Chimera Station from Tasty Minstrel Games or... Um, the new uh, uh, Leaders of Euphoria from Overworld Games. I'm not going to talk about those either. I'm only talking about the top seven games that I have never played that I'm just super excited about. Last but not least, uh, there's one particular game that would be number one with a bullet on my list, but because of non-disclosure agreements, I can't actually talk about the game. But needless to say, I'm hoping to have one of the first videos up when I'm allowed to talk about it. But let's save that for another time. So let's get started with my top seven most anticipated. And once again, these are in no particular order. So the first game I'm going to be talking about is Donner Party from BTRC. That's Blacksburg Tactical Research Center. Not exactly a game company, I don't think. But this is actually a two to five player game where you, it's a history themed game where you were going to be in the Donner Party. You're going to be freezing to death in the winter, and you were going to have to resort to cannibalism in order to survive the winter. And the game seems to be taking the theme seriously, you know, um, because it, it really did happen. I mean, it's kind of terrifying. It's an educational game, which I'm a big fan of. Auction bidding, cooperative play, press your luck is what they have listed on there. I like the artwork, and uh, some of the early reviews are in. Apparently, it's a very intense game, which I'm a big fan of games that are uh, intense and uh, I'm excited to see this one I really like historically themed games this has been a period of time that has always intrigued me so the fact that they turned it into a game is very interesting do I think it will be on my top 10 games of 2017 probably not but I'm still very excited to try this one out that is the Donner Party uh, so moving on to my next game number six and the first time but not the last time you will hear his name Rob Davio who, I gotta start off, I have yet to be very impressed by any of his games, but still, fingers crossed, is Ultimate Werewolf Legacy. So for me personally, Werewolf is one of my favorite games of all time. I love Werewolf, I love being the moderator, I love playing it, I love all that good stuff, and they are making it into a legacy style game where decisions you make from game one are going to impact games later on. I'm very excited to see how this works. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm not quite sure how it's going to work from game to game. But apparently um, the game is divided into chapters. So they're expecting you to play uh, three games each per setting, per sitting, which I think is completely reasonable. It plays, ooh, it does not have a player count, which is very, very interesting there, because that's one of the beautiful things about Werewolf, is it can accommodate a large group of players. I wonder if this could be the first ever, ever large group uh, legacy game, where, like, you could play with 20 people. That would be really freaking cool. Once again, I do have to specify, I have yet to be impressed by anything Rob Davio has done. I saw the beauty in Pandemic Legacy, but I still didn't like the game at two players. Um, so I'm very hopeful that Ultimate Werewolf is the one that breaks that curse because I love Werewolf and I want Werewolf Legacy really, really bad. Very excited about that one. That one legitimately would probably be in my top three if I were to rank these in the proper manner. So that is Ultimate Werewolf Legacy from Bezier Games. So my number 765 is one of the games that I found out about at Gen Con. It was one of those hidden little gems. One of the reasons why I love doing my Gen Con Bonanza is because I get to see all these little games that don't get the buzz, but I'm like, whoa, 
that looks incredible. That game is Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic a post-apocalyptic board game. So immediately, post-apocalypse, that is one of my favorite themes in board games or video games or anything, period. I love that theme. Two to five players, two to five hours. Yeah, you heard me right. So this is a meaty, epic experience, and I got a chance to see um, see the game all set up and laid out. I unfortunately didn't get a chance to play it. Uh, adventure, card game, dice, economics, political, science fiction, area movement, dice rolling, role playing, storytelling, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. This game looks incredibly variable. It looked like there was like probably 600, 700 cards and you're going to have different events that are going to happen and different characters with their own different attributes. And every single time you play this game, it looks like it's going to be vastly different experience, which uh, I'm really excited about. Uh, do, do, do. What would happen after a nuclear and biological apocalypse? You're essentially like running your own little town. You got a, you got a group for yourself. It looks amazing. I saw a lot of people were really hyped about this after Gen Con. The Kickstarter is successfully funded. This is definitely one that I'm going to reach out to them and say, hey, you want to hook me up with a review copy? Because that looks amazing. That is Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game. I knew it was going to be on this list as soon as I saw it last year at Gen Con. Check that one out. Oh, the name of the company, as of course is Fallen Dominion Studios, LLC. They're worried about getting sued. So, moving on to my number, that was five, so we're going to four, is a very different game. It is a two-player game where you are going to be meeting the love of your life and trying to make a relationship work, and that is called Fog of Love. Yes, the Fog of Love from Hush Hush Projects is a two-player game, ages 15 plus, take you 45 to 90 minutes to play, and essentially you are trying to make a relationship work or make yourself uh, make yourself happy. So it's a bluffing card game with deduction. It's cooperative, but there are ways that you can win by yourself, potentially by bouncing out of a toxic relationship. But I'm just going to read it to you. Fog of Love is a card game for two players who act out a stormy love affair. You play from the very first sparks of attraction through in-law encounters, awkward situations, arguments, parties, thoughtful gifts, secret affairs, kids, and reconciliations to a hopefully happy ending. That sounds really cool. I love when games just... Do something different. You know, I love post-apocalypse. I got, I love werewolf. I love zombies. I love Cthulhu. I like all that sort of stuff. But I love when a game tries something different. Completely different. Completely out there. This sounds really cool. I watched uh, part of Rod, Rondo's video about it. Because he did it. It was a Kickstarter. He seemed to like it a lot. Granted, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Obviously, because our tastes are a little bit different. But it looks very, very cool. It looks like a really unique idea. Very excited for this one. That is... Fog of Love, very thematically cool looking two player game coming out in 2017. Oh, which one? Let's do this one. So, next, continuing on with the quirky games, we have a game called Emily is Probably Dead. This is for four to six players from Analog Evolution Games, who I don't think has any games out right now, but they are very ambitiously, I think, trying to launch three games next year. It's 20 30 minutes. And it is somewhat like a whodunit game. It's a bluffing deduction murder mystery game where everyone killed Emily. You all worked together. You killed this lady, unfortunately. And now you are trying to search to find her because, well, you know, you obviously don't want to look guilty. But you also have an incriminating piece of evidence that you have. So you have to try and figure out when the right time is to stash the evidence all the while trying to make it look like you are looking for Emily, a uh, sinister game of bluffing and collusion. You know, I love collusion. I love bluffing. I like the theme, as morbid as it may be. And, and it says right here, a new twist on the whodunit theme. I love the whodunit theme. So whodunit, you all did. Now it's a question of who is going to get caught and who is going to get away with the murder. I like that theme. Call me morbid. I think it's a cool sounding theme. No artwork, no anything right now. So probably quarter four, 2017, but it still sounds like a very intriguing, interesting game. Reason it's on my list is because it sounds like nothing else I've ever played. That is, Lisa, Emily is probably dead by now. So, moving on to my top two. So, we'll, we'll start off with the one that would most likely be probably in the 7-6 slot. I'm not too terribly excited about the publisher of this game or about the designers of this game. In fact, both of the designers of this game, I'm not particularly big fans of their game. 
Um, let me see what it was. Uh, it's, it's Chronicles 1, The Origins. It's by Rob Davio, who I already said I'm not a particularly big fan of any of his games so far. I am hopeful, though, that this year is going to change that. And by Dirk Niemeyer, who I think I've only played one of his games, and it was one of my worst games of 2016. Corrupted Kingdom, bleh, bleh, one of the most boring games I've ever played. So, the two designers scare me a little bit. Also, Artana Games. I've never, I don't think I've liked any games from Artana Games yet, so that also scares me a little bit. But... This game sounds really cool. Three to six players, 30 to 60 minutes. This is a legacy style game. Obviously, it's got Rab Dabio on it. And players will build a new ver version of the world in this game. Uh, starting with the first game, you're going to take the role of the leader of a small and emerging tribe in the early Stone Age, collaborating to avoid threats. And you're going to slowly but surely build up your tribe. And what's really intriguing to me, it says not every tribe created in this game will survive to the next game. Does that mean that you could, could like, there's player elimination, kind of, where you're going to have to start next game as a different tribe? I'm very intrigued by this. I like the idea of evolving your civilization and building up your own personal civilization. I like I love, no, I don't like it, I love the aspect of a high-risk, high-reward thing where you could potentially die and lose the progress that your civilization has been doing up until this point. I feel like those are really cool ideas. Designers, game companies scare me a little bit, but this game sounds really, really cool. That is Chronicles 1 Origins from uh, Artana Games. Now, my number one most anticipated game of 2017 is is a game that I also legitimately think will be my number one game of 2017, and I legitimately believe will be the number one game of 2017. I think people are going to go absolutely buck wild crazy for this game. People are just going to be, oh my god, people are going to be sea following this game, except this game is not going to suck, and that is Charterstone from Stone Meyer Games, uh, designed 100% by Jamie Stegmaier, at least that's what it says on here, and this is a legacy, a village building legacy worker placement game, one to six players, 30 to 60 minutes, I like all of that, and this one, you are going to be building a, um, you're going to be building a city, pretty much. You're going to be working together to build a city. The prosperous kingdom of Green Gully, ruled for centuries by the Forever King, has increased to decree to its citizens to colonize the vast lands beyond its borders. In Charterstone, you construct buildings and populate a shared village, building stickers and permanently added to the game board and becoming action spaces for any players to use in the future. Now, the thing that really intrigues me about this game, and the game theme itself doesn't intrigue me as much as say chronicles but good track record i've yet to play a bad stonemeyer games jamie stegmeyer is a fantastic designer so i'm very excited about that 30 to 60 minutes worker placement these are scratching all my itches but the coolest thing about this is is it says once you are done playing through 11 plus games of this you will have a one-of-a-kind worker placement game. So you will hopefully still have a fully functional, potentially great, worker placement game after you've gone through the experience. That intrigues the heck out of me. Also, one to six players, which fingers crossed means it's going to be great as a two-player experience as well. Stonemeyer Games blew it up with Scythe. They actually lived up to the expectations, which hardly ever happens in this industry when the expectations are that high. They lived up to those expectations, and I have a feeling that this one, boom, is going to send them into the stratosphere. I think this is going to be their first game that they actually self-publish as well. There won't be a Kickstarter for it, so I'm very interested to see how that does. I'm pretty sure, at least, don't, uh, obviously, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm pretty sure I remember him saying that this was going to be a self-published one. Uh, that is Charterstone from Stonemeyer Games. Looks amazing. And those are my top seven games of 2017. Obviously, there's tons of games coming out. I'm excited about a lot of games coming out next year. But I just had to whittle it down to seven. And a lot of games I don't even know about. I know about a couple of them that are coming out that look super, super cool that I can't even tell you about. So obviously, there's tons of games that I don't know about. And very excited for next year. As you, If you could not tell... I am yearning for a legacy game that I love. Because right now, my favorite legacy game is actually... Um, we didn't play test this legacy, you know, because Pandemic didn't do it for me. I've yet to play Risk Legacy, unfortunately. 
Seafall does not interest me that much. So hopefully this is the year that that big Legacy game comes out and just transcends. Even though I think Pandemic Legacy comes out this year. No, I think that's 2018. But I'm rambling. What is your most anticipated game of 2017? Which game on the list did you just find out about? You're like, ooh, that looks really, really cool. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.